<sighs> All right. So we are going to factor today. And the process of factoring isn't going to change, although the circumstances are a little bit different. And here is what's different about today's factoring as opposed to the factoring that you've been doing in the past. In the past, when you've been asked to factor uh, quadratics, you've always had uh, something that looked like this. You had an x squared, or whatever letter, x squared. Then you had plus or minus a number in front of a linear term, just a plain x without the exponent. And then you had a constant, a c value at the end. So that is the only factoring we've done so far, aside from the factoring out the greatest common monomials. Today, we are going to add an extra constant in front of the quadratic term, that is the squared term. So now the factoring we have, we're going to have an a value in front of the x squared. We're still going to have the middle term with a constant in front of it, and we're still going to have the constant at the end. That is the difference for today's factor. Okay? So when you're being asked to factor a quadratic, we've talked about our checklist, uh, things that we look through to, to try to make our factoring easier. And so Henry, are you ready for this, sir? Yeah. What's the first thing that we look for when we are factoring? We look for the greatest common monomial. All right. Does this term have a common monomial? No. It does not. Uh, it only has y's in two of the three terms. And 5 and uh, 2 are both prime. We can't factor out a greatest common monomial. Henry, what is the second thing we look for? Uh, difference of squares. Difference of squares, OK. Is this a difference of squares? OK, we said no. Why is this not a difference of squares? Joe? It's not two terms. And they're not square numbers at the end. Since they're not square numbers at the end, that uh, precludes it from being factored as a square binomial. So we are left with number four, looking for a binomial pair of factors. OK. So here's how to deal with this situation. You can still make your rectangles if you wish, but we're, we're just going to deal with this in a table. OK? So we are going to make a table. Now this table is a little bit different than the table that you made before. Instead of a factor sum table, this is going to be called a possible factor and linear term table. Basic, basically the same premise, but different verbiage. So we have possible terms. and linear term. And you'll remember that the linear term is that middle term. It's the thing that if you just graphed y equals x, it, it would be a line. So that's why it's called the linear term. So here's how it works. We are going to take some guesses. We can guess fairly well what the possibilities are for your binomial so that you get the correct a value, in this case 5, and you get the correct c value, in this case it is negative 2. And then we are going to check to see if it gets the correct middle term, the correct linear term. If it does, we have a wiener. If it doesn't, we don't. Winner. I'm hungry, so I would like a hot dog. You're always hungry. I am always hungry. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We know it's going to be a binomial pair of factors. So I'm going to put my binomial pair of parentheses. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask myself, how can I get 5y squared? What times what is 5y squared? Ethan? 5 times 1. 
Five times one, okay, I'll, I'll agree with the five. Five times one is in fact five, all right. But we need that y squared, so how is that gonna factor in, Ethan? Uh, y after one. So five y, all right, and one y. Incidentally, I'm gonna write that again underneath because I feel a second option in the air. It is coming. So then, so uh, everyone's with us so far. Yeah. We know 5y times 1y is 5y squared. Okay. So now we are going to take a guess at the second term. So what times what is negative 2? What times what is negative 2? Allie? One and negative two. One and negative two. Okay. So uh, let's, just for fun, let's have negative two and positive one. Does that make sense? So right now, looking at this first binomial, I know for absolute certain that 5y times 1y is 5y squared. I also know absolutely and positively that negative two times 1 is negative 2. I just don't know if when I multiply it out by doing the rainbows and smiley faces, for those people who, who aren't in my class, uh, you may call that foiling. We don't know if that's going to work out. Okay? Let's try another option. Let's try um, positive 1 here and negative 2 here. Would you agree that these are two separate yeah. uh, binomial pairs? Mm -hmm. They are not the same. Okay. But wait, there are more options. It is also possible to have 5y plus 2 times 1y. Obviously, you don't have to write the 1, but we will for now. Uh, times uh, minus 1. And you could also have... 5y minus 1 times uh, 1y plus 2. So you notice how even with prime numbers as your a and your c values, you can have four possible answers, right? So you can see that this, these types of problems, especially when you introduce composite numbers, you're going to have a ton of different options that you have to go through. As you do more of these, they'll become easier to eliminate some, okay? So now we have four possible answers. We don't know which one, and Oscar, I can see the excitement in your eye. <laughs> We're going to find it, you and I, ready? Okay, so I know that all of these will produce two y, uh, five y squared and negative two. So we're just gonna multiply half of it to see if we can get the linear term. We're going to multiply negative 2 times 1y. What is negative 2 times 1y, Oscar? 2y. We have 2y. It is negative 2y. What is 5y times 1? Oscar? 5y. It is 5y. OK. Two, negative 2y plus 5y equals? Positive 3y. Positive 3y. So you notice how I had to multiply the insides and then the outsides, and that the combination of those two products give me my middle term, my linear term, right? I don't have to multiply this piece out because I know that's going to be 5y squared. That's what I'm looking for. I don't have to multiply this piece out because I know that that's going to be negative 2. So I only have to do half of the multiplication to check the middle term. Okay, did this linear term match the one that I started out with? No! no. So that is not a, the correct answer, therefore I can strike this as an option. So now I'm going to try the second option and let's see what I get. 5y times negative 2 is? Negative 10. Negative 10. Y. 1 times uh, 1 times y is? 1y. 1y. Positive 1y. Negative 10y plus 1y is? Negative 9y. Negative 9y. Is that what we have in the linear term here? No. Yes. Oh, 
It is. So therefore, this is the correct answer. If I was really jonesing to do more of this, I could multiply these out and I would discover that I would have negative 3y and then I could multiply these out and I would find that this was positive 9y and neither of these are okay. So my correct answer here is 5y plus 1 times y minus 2. Question so far? That would be the final answer, correct. Uh, we're going to keep with whole number answers. So you always have a whole number. If you do need to work with decimals, then that means that the, the uh, trinomial is prime, and you'd write prime. Okay? So let's try another one. I will write. You tell me what to write. Okay? So before we do that, I'll take a quick little picture. Okay, where did it go? I don't know. Okay, so I'll clear this off. Good morning, Henry. Uh, of course he is. Okay, so let's try this problem. You tell me what to do. Let's say we have 7y squared minus 9y plus 2. All right, so what is the first thing that I'm going to look for when I am being asked to factor this problem, I should probably write factor it up here. All right, Sean. Is there a greatest common monomial in this? No. 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 Is this a difference of squares? No. no. Are any of the uh, outside terms perfect squares? No. Okay, so then we're stuck finding a binomial pair of factors, right? Okay, so what is my first step now that I've eliminated the other forms of factoring? What am I going to do, Emily? Um, we make the table. Could you tell me what we're going to label in the table? Possible terms I'm just going to put PT for possible terms. LT for linear term. All right. And so what would be my next step? And, and I'd do this for all problems. What would I do next? Olivia? What times y equals 7y squared? Yes, I would agree. What times what is equal to 7y squared? But even before that, I can help myself out a little bit by filling in, or if I could put some stuff in the table really quickly, make it really easy. Jenna? I'll put some pairs of parentheses. And I'm just going to go ahead and put four pairs because I know that since I have two prime turn, uh, numbers, I only have four possible answers. All right, so going back to Olivia's question, uh, would you mind repeating it because I have a short memory? Um, what times what equals 7y squared? Okay, and could you answer your own question? 7 and 1. So we can go ahead and we put 7 and 1 in all of them. So 7, it would be 7y. And y? 7y and y? 7y and y? 7y and y. Now you'll notice that it, I find it easier to organize this if I keep the same first two terms in the binomials and then rearrange the second terms. That way I find that I don't accidentally repeat the same binomial pair, which is easy to happen. It happens easily in these problems. Okay, so what is my next step? What am I going to look for next? Joe? Things that equal positive 2. Like what? 2 and 1. So positive 2, that's a 2. For 
plus 1. So I'm going to flip-flop them in the next one. So positive 1, positive 2. Okay. Uh, are there any other factors of positive 2? Are there any other factors of positive 2? Allie? Negative 2 and negative 1. Negative 2 and negative 1. I'm going to write them just as you said. Negative 2, negative 1. And then I flip them. Negative 1 and negative 2. And now it is time to multiply for the linear term to see if we get the linear term in this problem. We're looking for a negative 9y. All right. So do I have to multiply 7y times y? No, why not? I'm just trying Just trying to find the middle term. OK. So 7y times the outside of 1. 7y times 1 is? 2 times y is? 2y. I add them together, and I get a total of? Positive 9y. That doesn't work, so I can strike it. Let's try the next one. 7y times 2 is? One times y is? Fourteen y plus y is? Fifteen y. Fifteen y. And you're remembering that when you add terms, the variables stay the same. So the y is just y. It is not y squared. That doesn't work. So I can eliminate that as a possibility. So let's try the next one. Seven y times negative one is? Okay. Uh, negative 2 times y is? Negative 7 y minus 2 y is? Negative 9 y. Negative 9 y. Oh my goodness. That's what we're looking for. So we know that this here is the correct answer. So you'd write that this statement is equivalent to 7 y minus 2 times y minus 1. And you are done.